Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the AAAS YouTube channel. And this is part of the good stuff. This is the AAAS Journal Author Series. And I am super happy to have Stefano Bertone with us today. Hey, Stefano. Hi, Frank. Uh, nice to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Well, thank you very much for agreeing to talk about your very lovely PSJ article. It's great. Uh, Stefano, where, where are you located at these days? So I'm in Washington, D.C., um, okay. working um, actually a bit outside of Washington in Greenbelt, uh, Maryland, uh, at uh, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. Mm -hmm. Very um, good. Uh, are the cherry blossoms happening? Is it is it springtime yet? In cherry blossoms uh, already happened. Uh, and they are uh, well, they're still there. They are still there all over the city. But uh, the peak uh, was last week. Ah. And yeah, spring is here. And yeah. today it's actually a very lovely day. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I was just in uh, DC maybe three weeks ago, two weeks ago, and I think we were like one week early for the cherry blossoms. So they now they're all gone. So you know they only last like two weeks or something. So well, it depends if you. Yeah, well, you're still in time. You're still on time if you are passing through the area. Mm, not anytime soon. Not anytime soon. <laughs> well. Next year, I'll get our, our things over there. Well, uh, where, where are you? So I'm in precisely? Phoenix, Arizona, Phoenix. Oh, Phoenix. Uh, cool. and it is April 4th as uh, 2023 as we record this. And today is a little unusual day because uh, I guess there was a big northern um, air front coming down. And so the high temperature in Phoenix today will only be 64 F. Um, I can convert that to see if you want, uh, but relatively cool. This will probably be our last last cool day and then someone will turn on the power switch and <laughs> we will get warm <laughs> that to be able to yeah. go out uh, to all the beautiful landscapes that you have over there the, the, desert's outdoors. the desert's in bloom right now it's we got yellows and oranges and purples and it's very pretty it's very nice very that's nice. a great thing about uh about arizona I guess. almost as good as Water. cherry blossoms cherry blossoms are very pretty very cool they are two weeks, but they are cool. Uh, and Stepano, what do you like to do for research? Well, um, I'm an astronomer uh, as a background, and mainly focusing on planetary science right now. Cool. Um, analyzing um, remote sensing data from uh, spacecrafts around the solar system, uh, um, mainly. Um, Altimeter data, radio science, camera data, whatever we can use uh, to, uh, Get a uh, to observe um, solar system bodies, planets, moons, uh, and, uh, and study them from um, basically from their deep interior through uh, geodesy ooh, ooh. measurements uh, to the surface uh, through uh, yeah surface measurements uh, of sure. uh, multiple kinds. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. That is going to bring us to this very lovely Planetary Science Journal article. It's open access, people. Go grab a copy. Highly resolved topography and illumination at Mercury's South Pole from Messenger Dual Imaging System Narrow Angle Camera. That's MDIS NAC. And Stefano, take us away. Thanks a lot, Frank. <clears throat> yeah. Um... So, um, as I was saying, one of the focus of my research uh, is to um, um, is to work and understand uh, um, planetary surfaces, and uh, in particular, I've been working a lot on uh, the Moon and Mercury, obviously. Cool. And with my co-authors here, uh, Erwin Mazzarico, Mike Barker, uh, Matt Siegler, uh, Jose Martinez Camacho, Colin Hamill, uh, Ellie Glatzenberg, uh, and Nancy Chabot. We, um, we took a look uh, at um, Mercury's South Pole. Mm -hmm. So Mercury poles. So just to give a bit of context, why do we care about topography at Mercury's South Pole? Uh, mm -hmm. Mercury polar regions uh, are uh, uh, particularly interesting because we we saw a lot of evidence uh, of uh, um, bright uh, potentially ice deposits uh, mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, so in order to uh, to characterize uh, to uh, these uh, these bright deposits to understand what's really there, uh, we actually need to know uh, what's the environment 
uh, at these uh, in in these regions, and um, yeah, in, in, well, one one point, uh, one one main point is okay. We we saw what, what the first observations we got from for these regions so were actually um, radar observations from Earth, and we saw that these regions uh, had. Uh, a lot of uh, um, highly reflective uh, areas, uh, but these highly reflective areas, uh, um, well, they could be whatever they we, we needed to characterize them better and mm -hmm. to know if it, if it if it could be ice, uh, we needed to know if these regions were actually cold enough over a, a full solar cycle to be able to uh, to harbor uh, ice. Cool. Um, and this advanced modeling uh actually needs a uh, very good knowledge uh, of the um of of the of the topography of the uh, of the area so we need good elevation models uh, um to uh to simulate illumination conditions if these regions are actually getting uh, direct sunlight uh, and if they are getting uh, um heated by by the sun okay Cool. Um, so this was this was done quite extensively um, at Mercury's uh, north uh, pole mm -hmm. uh, after uh, the Messenger uh, uh, spacecraft visited uh, the planet uh, between 2011 and 2015. We got several observations uh, by the Mercury laser altimeter, uh, giving us uh, um, um, very accurate uh, uh, topography maps. Uh, of the of the region mm -hmm. like and it. thanks to these we got um accurate illumination and thermal models showing that indeed uh, uh these cold these um these bright regions uh overlap with cold traps uh, um which are uh, these areas uh at, located at the, at the polar regions of mercury that never received direct sunlight uh, and so uh, stay always uh, very cold, uh, close to <clears throat> uh, close to the uh, to zero kelvins, even uh, uh, even if we are uh, actually quite close to the sun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. So right. um, so we could do all of these at the at the North Pole uh, uh, of Mercury. Uh, the problem is that Messenger's orbit uh, is uh, quite elliptical. Yeah, uh, quite elongated, uh, and the the periapsis of the orbit was close to uh, Mercury's north pole. Okay, nice. And uh, the spacecraft was getting uh, very far from the planet at the uh, over the the southern regions. Right. Uh, so, for instance, uh, um, there were no altimeter uh, data uh, collected uh, over the south pole. Wow. Okay. Uh, no, no laser altimetry. Okay. Because the uh, yeah, it was too far away uh, for the altimeter to function there. Um, nevertheless, we have images of uh, of these regions, and um, images were used uh, to um, to reconstruct uh, some terrain model mm -hmm. um, at lower resolution uh, um, and only of the regions that were. Uh, uh, Actually illuminated uh, by uh, by the sun. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, this initial uh, this initial effort uh, uh, to reconstruct topography was actually uh, the, the the goal was to reconstruct a global topography of Mercury. There was no focus uh, on the on the southern uh, region uh, specifically. Okay. So the method was not um, well adapted uh, for the for the southern regions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So actually, you can uh, go uh, down to uh, to figure three. Figure three. Let's take a look at figure three. Yes. Three. Ooh, there we go. Current USGS stereos. Uh huh. Yeah. So figure three on the on the left uh, is the um, is the topography model uh, that we started our study with. Okay. Um, and it. Okay. Uh, it's. Rather low resolution, uh, and uh, if, if you if you check uh, the center of that figure, you will see that the the south, which um, which represents the, the the actual south pole of, of Mercury, uh -huh. 
which is also a region, um, one of the regions where most uh, um, bright, uh, rather bright deposits uh, are located. Okay. Um, it's actually um, not at all defined. Uh, it's uh, it's just an artifact. It shows so, sort of a flower, if you yeah, uh, that yeah. you can see that you can see there. Yeah, see it, got it. Uh huh. So um, so we actually went went back to to it and checked. Okay, what data do we have? Uh, can we do uh, something better yeah. and uh, and get a better idea of the topography that then we can use uh, to model illumination and uh, and characterize this. Uh, uh, these bright deposits because it's actually even if we got a, a very good look at the northern hemisphere in order to understand uh, um, whether uh, uh, water ice on mercury uh, how did it get there uh, how did it evolve over time um, <clears throat> we we actually need to get an homogeneous view at both hemispheres to understand uh, if they um, if the conditions in both are similar, or um, or, or what what can uh, what can change uh, what changes between the two? Right. Cool. Good. Okay. So um, so as I, as I was saying, uh, at the South Pole, we we just have images. Mm -hmm. um, better. Previous studies uh, had used a, a technique uh, based on stereo pairs of the images from different okay. points of view different uh -huh. angles uh, and similar illuminations mm -hmm. to uh, to reconstruct uh, the um, the 3d profile of the of the surface I'm with you. Um, that's not particularly adapted uh, for uh, um, the for the polar regions um, and um, and also in the in this case uh, we didn't have many stereo pairs uh, very close to the south pole which is one of the region of the reasons why uh, of those artifacts that you can see on the left. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, uh, there are other methods uh, that can be used uh, and which became available lately, uh, especially as uh, computational power, uh, ah. um, com computational capabilities uh, advance. Mm -hmm. One of these methods is uh, um, photoclinometry, okay. which uh, has another name, uh, which is maybe um, more uh, self-explanatory, which is uh, um, shape from shading. Okay. Mm -hmm. Meaning uh, that we, we get different images with um, different illumination angles. So, so you can go to figure one, probably. Yeah, no, it's just... Uh, well, you out. can. <laughs> okay, figure different one. images uh, with different illumination angles right. uh, would produce uh, different shadows on the, on the surface. Okay. And uh, based on these shadows, we can uh, reconstruct uh, terrain slope. Okay. And yeah. from uh, terrain slope, uh, we can reconstruct uh, the topography. Just knowing uh, where the hills uh, and valleys uh, create generating these shadows that we see on the images uh, are. Very good. Um, so we had a look at all the images that we have on the regions that we are interested in. And uh, here, figure one shows. Uh, the resolution of these images. So we have quite a lot of images at mm -hmm. resolutions between 100, well, let's say 150 and 250 uh, meters per pixel. Mm -hmm. uh, previous previous map, previous uh, elevation models uh, had um, uh, a resolution of uh, a, a nominal resolution, at least of 660 mm -hmm. uh, meters per pixel. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, knowing that with this technique uh, we can basically go down to image resolution, uh, uh, this tells us that we can do much better. Nice. Okay. Um, also, what we need is different illumination angles because we we need to know we need to see shadows from different, uh, um, yeah, from the, angles, uh, yeah, from different angles, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second uh, plot here shows us that the solar azimuth available for these images. Uh, well, there are peaks, uh, but it's pretty broad. Uh, we we have different uh, uh, we have different angles uh, for different images over the whole map. So um, this is good. It's pre in principle a good basis uh, to to reconstruct topography. Uh huh. Nice. Um. So. Okay. Still high. Angles. Um. So based on this um, uh, data set of uh, thirteen hundred uh, more or less. Um, uh -huh. Images uh, from uh -huh. the narrow angle camera uh, of uh, of MDIS. 
uh, of the messenger uh, dual um, image camera, imaging camera. Mm -hmm. um, we we attacked the this problem, and if you go to Figure Two, Figure Two, um, ASP and SPS. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So this is the region uh, on the left. You can see the the region we are uh, we are dealing with. Basically, the same that you showed before on the on the topographic models. It's a pretty big big region. It's pretty large. It's uh, more than uh, one point five million kilo uh, square kilometers. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, it it it's not really feasible to uh, to apply shape from shading uh, to the whole region at once. Uh, just computationally, it would it would explode right uh, even if we are um, we are actually working on uh, on the mm -hmm. nasa um, um, climate simulation center uh, um, yeah. cluster yeah mm -hmm. um, we still need to um, to, to split this region uh, in uh, several tiles we we chose mm -hmm. uh, uh, 25 uh, tiles so 200 kilometers times 200 kilometers uh, um, per uh, offside. Mm -hmm. And for uh, for each of these tiles, uh, we actually check which images overlap with these tiles. We check uh, um, what's the best uh, subset of these images, uh, allowing us to cover the full uh, tile, yeah. as you see on the right. Uh, yeah. You have uh, an example of tile 18 uh, uh -huh. covered by a selection of 20 images. We mm. want them to. Uh, yeah. We want the geographic coverage to to cover the whole tile with uh, with data, uh, but we also want um, the um, the illumination angles uh, for each point on this tile to be broad enough uh, to uh, to give us a good coverage with different shadows uh, um, that will allow us in the end to reconstruct uh, topography without artifacts or minimizing the artifacts. Ah, right. Right. Very good. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So uh, we did this for uh, for the whole surface. It's a, in principle, it's a um, um, it's a pretty time consuming uh, task. The yeah, the most difficult part of this is uh, to select the images uh, and to um, and and then to align them to each other because they need to be very accurately aligned. Uh, uh, on, on top of each other to avoid uh, aliasing uh, effects uh, in the final yes. DM. Yes. So uh, for this, we um, we set up uh, um, a pipeline that automated uh, that um, sure. an automated pipeline uh, to uh, to select the images, uh, to align them, uh, and in the end uh, to uh, um, to produce uh, the uh, the topography from them. So just out of curiosity, when you do that process, how how long is that? Is that a one minute process? Is that a one month process? So for uh, using uh, using the resort the, the the cluster that we have uh, at Goddard, um, uh -huh. it takes uh, around one day for each tile. Okay. To uh, to process. Okay. And obviously, this is in the in the best case where everything goes right. Uh, yep. If things go wrong, maybe you re you figure out at the end of the first day uh, right. that you need to restart from scratch because one image was bad or okay. whatever. So it's it's actually a a long process, even with a with a lot of resources. And if you can run all of these tiles in parallel, correct, um, right. and right. fine tuning them, etc., it's quite long. Okay. Um, okay. Thanks. So to okay. Uh, to produce all these, we we use. Uh, uh, tool, but the basis of uh, all the process uh, is the Ames uh, uh, Stereo Pipeline, okay, uh, which has which is developed by NASA Ames. Mm -hmm. um, but then we 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 set up uh, our own pipeline around it mm -hmm. uh, in order to uh, to make the process feasible on such a large extent, which is uh, usually this. This technique is usually applied on uh, very small areas uh, uh, to uh, to get uh, highly high, de high level details uh, on very small areas. Uh, so we are uh, we are tweaking it a bit for uh, uh, for something a bit different. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Stretch. So um, well, once we apply this to uh, to the region, uh, we get our new. Um, 
our new uh, topography model uh, at 250 meters per pixel. And yes, uh, you are perfectly right, Frank. We go back to figure three and now we are on the right side. So this is our new uh, uh, elevation mm -hmm. map. You can, uh, you can see that broadly the two maps uh, are, um, are consistent with each other. Right. Um, more but but you can see a lot more uh, detail uh, in our map on the right. Uh, if you, right. you check, there are a lot more craters. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the especially mm -hmm. the central part, uh, very close to the South Pole, very important because that's where the bright deposits uh, that we want to characterize are. Yeah. Um, we we actually see uh, craters there and not uh, weird flowers. Right, and there's crater walls that are high, mm -hmm. and we can see exactly. Yeah, we can see crater walls uh, around the around the craters. I mean, all the mm -hmm. kind of topography that we that we expect uh, uh, that we expect to see. Also, if you go down to Figure Four, okay, Figure Four, these are slopes. we can uh, we can see the slopes. Yeah, so these are the slopes uh, uh, relative to uh, ah. to our to the two uh, topography model wow. models. Uh, um, you can see on the right that there is a, a lot more uh, a lot more uh, details in the in the slopes uh, um in the a lot more details in the crater walls uh, right. um yeah. even in the uh, even in the let's say flatter areas uh, you can see smaller craters uh, <clears throat> and, uh, mm -hmm. and such and you don't uh, you don't see all the artifacts uh, uh, that are uh, yeah that are there on, the, on yeah. the left. World of difference between these two. That's amazing. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah this, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah, and this actually opens the door uh, to um, um, to simulations we are interested in, um, to the illumination simulations we are interested in. So if you go down uh, uh, to figure eight, probably. <laughs> Figure eight. Well, that's all good. Let's go to figure eight. And... Yeah, then we'll go back to to all those. But oh no, sorry. Figure. Oops. Figure nine. Figure nine. All good. Figure nine. Rendering. Yes. Okay. Let's pull it up a little bit. So the um. <clears throat> so just to get a snapshot of the the difference between uh, uh the, the two the two models, the old one and the new one. Um, we we sampled uh, um, the illumination conditions at uh, different solar uh, at different points uh, along one solar cycle. Okay. In 2021. Wow. Using both models, so the upper row is the old one. The lower uh, row uh, is using rendering or illuminating our new model. Nice. And uh, yeah, you can. Wow. You can clearly see huge differences uh, in the in the bottom yeah. row. You can uh, you have realistic, more realistic illumination conditions. You see shadows sure. where you are supposed to see them. Uh, as, well, if you check the central crater, uh, which is uh, called uh, um, Chao Men Fu, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's um, here. but it's actually a crater <laughs> on the yeah. on the on the upper row. Uh, you see just artifacts. Yeah, nothing. So there. you can you can imagine that then when you when you try to uh, um, to predict uh, what are the illumination conditions at a certain in a certain region um, at a certain time uh, and try to extrapolate extrapolate uh, which regions uh, fall in permanent shadow, which regions are uh, cold or hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, the our DM uh, uh, actually allows you to. Uh, um, to get a, a, a much better uh, idea than the than the upper one. Absolutely. Uh, Very nice. Beautiful. So, um, so okay. So this is um, this is the basis uh, for uh, for our uh, for the second part of our uh, of our paper, uh, which is the analysis of the of the illumination conditions. Uh, um, Based on uh, both the EMs uh, and uh, and on ours to see how um, how these illumination conditions uh, fit uh, with uh, with actual observations uh, with the 
uh, with camera images for validation purposes, uh, and then uh, to radar observations of bright deposits uh, uh -huh. uh, to um, to check how if consistency improves uh, um, between uh, cold regions uh, or non-illuminated regions uh, and these bright deposits. Uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> or, uh, or what happens. I'm with you. So if you, um, if you go back uh, to figure, uh, hey, go up, figure six Down. probably. Six, there we go. Ooh, yes. Elevations, okay. Ah, oh, with names. Okay, here we go. So we are back to our um, two maps uh, of, the, of the South Polar region, left and right. Uh, this representation is just an peel shade, which is basically, well, a, a way to illuminate uh, the map uh, almost. Uh, from um, uh, one particular direction and elevation in order to enhance uh, the uh, the topography right and the slopes uh, wow so here it's even more visible the the difference in um wow. let's say realism or uh, reliability or absolutely whatever, yeah, um between the two maps and um the the white circles uh, show four regions uh, that we are particularly interested in because uh, um, we well, the, the radar observations uh, from a um, from a recibo from the Arecibo, from the Arecibo telescope on earth uh, showed uh, a lot of bright regions of bright uh, highly reflective uh, deposits uh, in mm -hmm. these uh, uh, four regions so these are the Chaumen Fu, Lovecraft, uh, Langle and Scopus uh, uh, craters Yes. And um, in figure seven, we are having a look at each of them yeah. under different illumination conditions. Let's and we compare um, um, an actual image uh, captured uh, by Messenger, which is the column on the left. And we compare them, we compare this image to um, a rendering of uh, the two terrain models, uh, the old one in the middle and ours on right. uh, the right. Got it, okay. Uh, under the same illumination conditions. Yes, wow. Mm -hmm. So uh, the point is, the point here is to, is to see that um, with the old model, one couldn't really make a very accurate simulation uh, of, uh, of real images. So right. the predictive power of uh, of the old model uh, in terms of uh, shadow shadowing uh, um, and yeah slopes uh, and uh, and everything um, was not sufficient uh, to support uh, um, the kind of accurate models that we need uh, uh, to characterize uh, these bright deposits uh, in terms of uh, um, whether they are ice, uh, what kind of ice they are. Uh, what uh, what optical properties uh, can we uh, can we infer uh, from our mm -hmm. observations? Mm -hmm. Very nice. Um, with our model uh, on the right, uh, you can see that the the shadows uh, and the, yeah. um, the highly illuminated regions. I mean, it's I wouldn't say that it's indistinguishable from the real image, but uh, in first approximation. Uh, you could believe uh, you could probably believe me if I if I told you that. Uh, that's uh, uh, that's the that the, the column on the right. Uh, it's a messenger image. I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> um, <laughs> especially if you go down. Uh, uh, go if you go down to the second image, actually, the um, the Chelman Fu crater, which is really the uh, located yeah. at the South Pole, which is Big always uh -huh. um, difficult. Yeah, it's very difficult because it's uh, most of it is in shadow. Yeah. Because of its position and because it has very, um, very high uh, walls uh, and rims. Yeah. Wow. Um, so most of it is uh, uh, is in basically in permanent shadow, mm -hmm. and uh, and nevertheless, uh, uh, based on uh, based on our analysis, we we managed to reconstruct it with a quite good fidelity. Mm -hmm. um, the the inner part. Uh, um, is a bit of a patchwork. Uh, we needed to uh, 
uh, to work uh, very closely on uh, on this one and almost manually tweak it uh, a bit in mm -hmm. order to um, um, yeah to uh, to refine uh, uh, the, the slopes, uh, but um, but we we get a quite a quite a good uh, representation and modeling yeah. of uh, of the old of the old topography there. Yeah, uh, which we which was quite unexpected uh, to be to be honest, and obviously a huge improvement from the previous uh, yeah. um, from the previous case uh, uh, <laughs> where where that yeah yeah we we couldn't do much there. Right. Very cool. And uh, same uh, same below for the other uh, for pass. the other craters and images. Uh, bang, um, bang bang! Wow. So this gives um, this gives a very good basis for. Uh, for further uh, analysis of, uh, mm. of illumination, yeah. and uh, it's also wow. a very good validation of our yeah. of our model. Yeah, very cool, very cool, nice. And um, impressive. Mm -hmm. So this one, <clears throat> this basically brings up brings us to uh, image eight, uh, no, image nine and ten. Okay. Uh, yeah, nine we. Covered. Oh, sorry, nine we already we already checked. Yeah, we did the illumination, and ten is average fluxes. So even image ten and eleven, they are pretty similar. Um, they, we we are uh, checking the predictions of our model against uh, either previous studies of illumination conditions at the South Pole based on uh, the maximum illumination available uh, on uh, uh, MDC images. Right. Or in image eleven, um, the consistency of um, our illumination predictions uh, with uh, um, radar brightness uh, measurements, uh, okay. radar reflectivity measurements uh, from uh, uh, Arecibo. Got it. So again, the the top row is the um, uh, are the same predictions. Uh, but rendering uh, based on the rendering of the old model, and the bottom row is uh, is our model for the four regions uh, um, that that were highlighted uh, by those circles, uh, um, and that we and that we checked uh, against uh, and these images. So these <laughs> these are a bit difficult to uh, to read, but the the key is that uh, um, yellow and blue. Yeah show where uh, our predictions uh, um, agree with the uh, previous studies uh, and observations. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, all in blue there. So we can, uh, we basically see that there is a lot more blue on the bottom row than, uh, um, a lot more yellow or blue on the bottom row than on the top row. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Since, uh, yes. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, this just shows that, roughly speaking, uh, um, illuminating our DM uh, ah. over a full solar cycle uh, puts shadows uh, and uh, puts shadows uh, to the right place. Okay. So um, we we can um, we can yeah. we can infer from our model uh, which regions uh, can be uh, colder or uh, more or less illuminated mm -hmm. uh, in a way that it's. Uh, uh, consistent uh, with cur with actual observations, whereas with the old model, uh, this was not possible. Ooh. Guessing. <laughs> or very... Guessing. <laughs> possibilities were very limited. Right. More wide open, yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Basically, yes. Cool. Very good. That was awesome. So this... Um, um, so yeah, th this is... Um, this is an overview of the results of um, of, uh, of this paper, and um, and yeah, they 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 actually open. A, it, it shows uh, uh, that um, with uh, with our with our new model, that basically our our uh, the the model that we are uh, that we are providing in this paper um, is a that's one uh, is a very useful. Uh, Product uh, to um, uh, for uh, further studies uh, of the of the thermal uh, environment uh, uh, at the South Pole of Mercury. Yep. And uh, it actually will allow uh, the the first uh, analysis uh, of the thermal environment there, 
and the first characterization uh, of these uh, of these bright deposits uh, um, that we have seen uh, since 2011, uh, but we haven't been able to uh, um, to investigate much further uh, until now. Cool. Very beautiful. Very nice. Very nice. Stefano, thank you so much for walking us through your very lovely article. You're welcome. Uh, Thanks for keeping up with me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pleasure. Um, and you mentioned it uh, a little bit, particularly there, um, <clears throat> toward the end. So so let me push on a little bit. Um, where do you think we go with this, let's say, over the next two to five years or so? Is there additional uh, uh, messenger images in the vault that haven't been cracked open yet? Um, are there future spacecraft going there? Is there stuff we can do from the ground? How about some theoretical modeling? You mentioned some of the thermal work. If we really want to find out what that um, shiny stuff is um, down there. And just sort of where do we go over the next couple of years? So there are um, there are several um, several possible and ongoing uh, developments. Okay. Uh, on the one hand, uh, yeah, as I was mentioning, uh, this work is the basis for uh, further uh, thermal modeling uh, and illumination modeling uh, in these uh, radar bright regions, and um, and we are actually yeah we are working on uh, on it. Uh, we are finalizing uh, um, oh. a thermal yeah. model based uh, on uh, um, on our new topography model uh, cool. presented here. Okay, um, and. Uh, this will allow us to, uh, as I was saying, to uh, compare, to compare, to get an homogeneous view of the of the whole planet, uh, uh, planets, polar regions, uh, north uh, and, and and south, uh, and see yeah. how uh, the thermal environment uh, uh, differs. Yeah. Um, nice. Another uh, uh, another possibility is actually um, open by uh, by these new products. Uh, is uh, is actually to yeah as you say to revisit uh, the Arecibo data from Earth. Unfortunately, we won't get uh, new Arecibo data no more from there. anytime soon. Uh, but we still uh, we still can work on the on the old ones uh, by leveraging uh, the uh, the new ac more accurate uh, topography mm -hmm. uh, models that allow us to. Um, to better project this data on the surface, to better geolocalize them, and uh, and in the end uh, to um, uh, to get a um, yeah to, to get a deeper and a more detailed analysis, uh, and uh, compare them with these thermal models uh, that we are uh, that we are working on. And um, more than that, uh, <clears throat> this was the first uh, <clears throat> first overall look, global look at the. At the at the South Pole region in terms of uh, of topography and illumination, um, so um, it's still possible to go to um, to these right radar bright regions uh, to select uh, five or six uh, and uh, uh, let's say a bunch of them, <laughs> and uh, and then uh, um, to really focus uh, on a detailed analysis of the of the images. Uh, there uh, to uh, to refine the models there, and uh, uh, for um, well yeah to refine the models there and uh, clean up uh, the final artifacts uh, um, uh, and and improve the the model in the most interesting regions, and uh, more than that uh, um, since all of this analysis is based on images we don't really have data on the on the shadowed regions. Right on the permanently shadowed regions, uh, we we never get uh, uh, um, image uh, data, right. but um, but we we still have an idea, some a priori of what a crater looks like, for example, mm -hmm. based on uh, so based on a partially illuminated crater, we can still have a bit um, reconstruct uh, what the rest of the crater looks like just based on a uh, on some symmetry consideration. And uh, this we couldn't do for the whole uh, for the whole South Pole region uh, clearly because it's a long work, wow. but it, it it's something that would be possible to do for uh, selected uh, locations. Cool. And and finally, well, uh, last but not least, the <laughs> um, the Bepi Colombo mission by the European Space Agency is currently oh, yeah. uh, um, um, traveling to uh, to Mercury. 
Awesome. He made his first uh, two flybys of uh, of Mercury, and uh, it it should get to Mercury in the next. Uh, well, it will start orbiting Mercury, orbiting. let's say, right. and get to the main phase of the mission uh, over the the next uh, three to four years. Uh, so the uh, the the big improvement that we will get with the uh, with with the Bepi Colombo with respect to Messenger is that Bepi Colombo will orbit Mercury on a circular orbit, okay. a circular low orbit. Let's say yeah. the the Mercury planetary orbiter uh -huh. um, part of the mission, and uh, so we will get altimetry data and topography data of the of the same uh, um, uh, quality that we now have at the North Pole. We will also get them for the whole planet, and. Uh, Plus, we will get um, image data from a uh, from a lower altitude. Uh, we will we will get uh, um, multispectral data. I mean, we will get a lot more yeah. uh, information yeah. about all these regions uh, uh, in the let's say near future in terms of uh, space missions and space exploration. Uh, and and actually, this work, uh, uh, our work, uh, also helps uh, in that respect for the preparation of uh, of the Picolombo. And, and its observations, because uh, um, with a with a better, with an improved a priori, um, it will be possible to, uh, uh, to 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 simulate and predict uh, which will be the most interesting targets uh, uh, for Bepi Colombo's observations. Uh, what to be expected, uh, and and obviously then we will correct uh, all these models uh, based on the new sure. observations. Yeah. Um, Science. <laughs> cool yeah that's science exactly that's science that's we science. iterate <laughs> we're, we're good yeah. iterators <laughs> yeah we're good iterators and, uh, very good, good trial and error um... <clears throat> trial and error so we yeah. do. very cool this is awesome well i really look forward to seeing this uh develop over the next couple of years and unravel some of the uh, uh the mysteries of particularly mercury south pole so very very cool so thank you once again, Stefano, and that will do everyone. And I hope this makes your astronomy day just a little bit better and we will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Thanks, Frank. Thanks everyone.